In this video, I'm going to talk about a class of passives that you are probably familiar with, and that's resistors. Most of the time, you see a resistor drawn as this, just a simple resistor with two terminals. But actually, whenever you use a resistor, you have to remember that you're not putting a resistor in your circuit, you're putting an RLC network in your circuit. And here we are. This is an equivalent circuit of the resistor, equivalent circuit, equivalent, equivalent circuit. And this is just one of many equivalent circuits, but this is one that uh, captures most of the major elements that I want to talk about. And it's pretty good, so we're going to use it. First up, there is a capacitor, uh, capacitance in uh, parallel with the resistance, and for surface mount components, that may be on the order of 0 0.1 picofarads to 0 0.5 picofarads. Those are some numbers I found around the web. And it's typically a function of package shape, uh, this capacitance. We have the inductance, L, and this is the lead inductance of the resistor. And for a surface mount component, there will be very little for the uh, type of components that you see. They have the long leads on them. There's a resistor with its stripes. This has a lot of lead inductance because it has long leads. Surface mount component, if you were to look at it sideways, it would look like this, and then you would it's sitting on the board here and you would solder it down here and solder it down here. They're very, there's very short leads and very little lead inductance. Let's assume you're using a surface mount component, which you should usually be doing, and so you can mostly ignore this L, but you still have the C. You should remember that when you're using a resistor, because of this capacitance, there will be a frequency, a corner frequency, F equals 1 over RC, where RC is the time constant. At that corner frequency, this circuit is going to start looking like a high-pass filter. Uh, it's going to start sending the higher frequency components through the capacitor. It's going to see a relatively low impedance and come on through. And so because of that high-pass filter, one thing you could do to uh, increase this uh, frequency, since the capacitance is mostly a function of, fu function of package shape, you would want to decrease your resistance that you're using. So for a given package size, you'd want to use the smallest resistance that you can. If this was your only consideration, and there are others, but this is one you should keep in mind. Next up, I'll talk about the classifications of resistors. The main classifications fall in three broad categories wire wound, film type, and composition type. Wire wound resistors are just like what they say. It's a lead coming in, a lead going out, and in between there's a lot of winds of a wire. And the advantage of a wire wound resistor is that you can control the resistance very tightly. It has a tight tolerance because it's primarily a function of the length of the wire. And when you use these for uh, measurements such as differential measurements, that's a good thing because you need to have, to have tight tolerances on your resistor. But because it has a very long length, it's effectively the same thing as having a long lead inductance. It has high L, high inductance. And so they have limited frequency response. You can't use them at too high of a frequency. And so you only use them when you really need that very tight control over the resistance value. Next up are film resistors, and these are typically metal film resistors. And they are made by uh, having a film in the center of the resistor that just has a small cross-sectional area. So if here's the surface mount package, I've never opened one, but maybe there's a small sliver of metal connecting the two terminals. And the resistance is a function of there being a small, uh, a small area through which the, the current can, can go. Third, we have composition resistors, uh, which are usually carbon resistors. And these are simple resistors where you have a surface mount component and there would be pieces of carbon, or basically that whole center section is filled with carbon. And they work because carbon has a, has a certain resistivity to it, and uh, it can be relatively well controlled. 
Uh, these resistors are very cheap, which is pretty much their only advantage. The reason why that's their only advantage is there's a lot of contact noise, contact noise in a carbon resistor because effectively the electrons have to hop between those different masses of carbon and so there's going to be a noise associated with that which I'll talk about a little later uh, but generally you only use these resistors if they're if cost is a consideration so in general uh, you should be using film resistors I think uh, others may disagree the third consideration for a resistor is the power rating and this is a pretty easy concept just uh, V equals IR is the voltage the voltage times the current is power and all this is saying uh, well this is I squared R for a given R you shouldn't force too much current through it and these will be usually given as a eighth watt or quarter watt or maybe even up to a half watt resistor and, and you should just do a quick calculation to make sure you're not passing too much current through your resistor and you don't want because you don't want to burn it up. Now I'm going to talk about noise in a resistor. Uh, the two kinds of noise that I think you should be most concerned with are thermal noise and contact noise. Thermal noise just has to do with the thermal diffusion of electrons around the resistor and it's going to result in a noise voltage that's equal to the square root of 4 times the Boltzmann constant times temperature times the resistance value times the bandwidth. In your circuit you can only control for the most part the temperature and the bandwidth that assuming you have a given resistor size and so you would bandwidth, bandwidth limit your system by adding low pass, high pass filters, uh, band pass filters and you may consider cooling down your your circuit but in most cases you won't have that luxury this is a fundamental limit of noise in a resistor you can't do better than thermal noise contact noise is something entirely different and this has to do with carriers hopping between different masses of material and the effect as I said before uh, carbon resistors they don't affect film resistors so much but let me draw a quick plot of what the noise in a resistor may look like as a function of frequency. So here's the resistor, here's the noise voltage, and here's maybe log F, and here's Vn. For a carbon resistor, it'll look something like this. We have maybe a 1 over F spectrum coming down until we hit the white noise floor, which is the thermal noise, and then it comes out this way. For a film resistor, it may look something more like just this, the white noise floor. So unless you have a compelling reason to use carbon resistors, you should use film resistors.